Uh, well, good morning um, again. Um, we're going to do things a little bit different this morning. Um, we've been in this series uh, through prayer. And it's, uh, I, I, I think we've, we've had a, um, a great time, at least I've had a great time um, you know, um, and throughout this series. We've been kind of unpacking a little bit about prayer. Prayer is a big topic, so it's not something we can really tackle just within a five-week series. But we, we, we talked ab- about you know, some misconceptions about prayer and trying to define prayer um, kind of simply and broadly as how we relate to God, how we be with God. Um, we talked about uh, specifically the prayers of, of complaint and lamentation. Um, we, we discussed uh, the contemplative life and contemplative prayer and how to establish contemplative rhythms in your life. And, and, and contemplation simply meaning how to be with God. I'll take, I'll, I'll take some backup batteries. You can never be too safe around here anymore with all our technical difficulties. Um, and so we, we, we unpack kind of what, what it looks like to develop these contemplative rhythms in your life, a type of life spent being with God. Prayer that isn't necessarily filled with us talking, but prayer that is filled with, with silence, with listening, or simply being. It's like if you, if you ever go on like a long car ride with like a really close friend or someone you, you love dearly, and you'll just have those stretches where you're not talking, and you're just there. And it's not awkward, right? You're not like, oh, why isn't the other person talking? Or maybe I should fill the space saying something. It's, you just, you're just with each other. And, and that's what this contemplative prayer is with God. It's just, it's just being with him. And we've been, you know, each of the five of the past four weeks, we've spent a couple of minutes in just silence, a type of silent prayer where we're not trying to fill the space with words, we're not asking for things, we're not even, we're not thanking God, we're just, we're just there. And we're open to just to be in his presence. And so um, we've been doing that, and we've kind of been building up to this last um, sermon today, and it's really not going to be a sermon, we're going to be practicing prayer um, in, a, in a more full way today. And so we're, we're going to be leading us in, in an ancient practice known as the Lectio Divina. And those are Latin words that simply mean divine reading. So we're going to be reading scripture. It's a, a small passage and reflecting on that scripture and, and prayerfully moving through the scripture. And, and, and we're going to spend time in silence. We're going to be there's going to be time where we're praying to God and, and using our words and all of this stuff. And so if you should have a bulletin, and if you don't have a bulletin or a pen, raise your hand and Marco will come around and, and give you a bulletin and a pen because um, the, the guide to the Lectio Divina is in your bulletin. Um, you may want to take notes. Um, if you want to write out your prayer, you can write out your prayer. The scripture is on the back that we'll be using. You may want to circle things um, in the scriptures. You may want to underline things, make notes. And so um, have that handy to be prepared as we um, engage in this practice called the Lectio Divina. Before we get there, I do want to um, make some notes, give some um, guidance to kind of let you know what this kind of looks like um, and and really the, the purpose behind it and why it's significant. Um, you know, prayer is a big topic. It's a big theology to talk about prayer. But when I think of the Lectio Divina, this is a practice that I think most fully captures the theology of prayer for me. Um, and there are, if you look up this practice online, you'll find that there's, there's a few different ways to, to do the Lectio Divina. There's always certain steps involved. Um, the, what's laid out, these six steps in here, is what I've used for, for years, uh, practicing the Lectio Divina, um, and it comes in six stages. Sometimes there's four stages, sometimes there's five stages. Uh, the one that I've used here has six stages, and I feel like it's the most comprehensive of, of all the ones that I've looked at. And you'll notice that the first thing we do when we engage in this prayer is we spend time in silence. And this is significant. 
Because in prayer, we often think that we get the first word, right? We start prayers, and what do we do? We just start talking. We get the first word, but this teaches us that true prayer begins with God. He always speaks first. He always moves first. If you have faith in him, it is because he has moved towards you and called you to respond. God always speaks first. He always moves first. We get to respond to that movement. And so we spend the first, um, the first stage simply in silence, opening ourselves, making ourselves ready to be with him. The second stage is the reading, right? And we'll read a, a passage. Typically, it's a short passage, it can be longer if it's, I guess, really good, but typically this, this practice is done with a, a short passage. Um, the Gospels are, are a great source for the readings, which we'll be in today. Um, and we'll read it slowly. And then the, in the third stage, it's called meditation, and we'll, we'll read the text again. And in the meditation, you're, you're, you're engaging in, in the text. You're, you're looking at the text. Maybe you're rereading the text. You're, you're looking for words or phrases that stand out to you. It's not something you're forcing. You're, you're asking the Holy Spirit, how do you want to speak to me now? And I, I will say that this is not Bible study, right? You're not... You're not, you're not analyzing the scripture. There is a time and a place for analysis and, and looking at the structure and, and studying the words and the roots and the historical context and the cultural context. And, and there's a place for, for that kind of study. For, for this practice, we're not, we're not trying to analyze the text. We're not trying to pick it apart, see how it works, and put it back together. We're trying to have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say directly to you today. That this is God's word, and he desires to speak to you. And he wants to speak to you through his scriptures, his word to us. And so how is he communicating to you in this moment? So you're trying to connect to the text. You're, you're connecting emotionally. How do you feel about the text? Do you relate to anyone in the text? Are you mad about anyone in the text? Like, you know, what, how, how are you connecting to um, the people and the words? The fourth stage is a response. In this stage, we, we pray back to God. And it, you might want to be thanking God, you might want to ask for things, you might want help, you might want guidance. You, it's, it's when you start talking back to God. No, notice here, we don't start speaking till stage four. <laughs> that is very different than how we normally practice prayer. Right? We, just, we just jump in and start talking, right? And, and in this practice, it forces us to slow down, to wait, to be open to God's movement, to hear his words, to connect to his words, then we respond to his words. And after some moments where we're, we're doing the speaking, step five is contemplation, and, and this is another time of silence. But this type of contemplation, we're, we're opening ourselves up to ask God to shape us. He is the potter, we are the clay. In light of, of how we've connected to God during this time, how does God want to now shape us? What needs to change in our lives? What does he want to add? What does he want to take away? What does he want to change? How does he want it to be different or, or grow? And, and we reflect on that and, and just be open to his movement, open to his words, open to be changed by him and led by him. And then the sixth one is incarnation. And this is simply... How, how does this change our life now? What, what do we do differently? As we go from here, how do we live out this experience that we had with the Holy Spirit? And, and I think this is another important theological point because our prayer must be incarnational. It is not enough for, for us to simply pray, ask God for things, ask God for 
to help, ask God to move, have him do these things, and then, and then we end the prayer and do nothing about it. We have been called to be the, to be the incarnation of prayer. You have been called to be the answer to someone's prayer. The incarnation begins with us living out how the Holy Spirit has spoken to us and moved us today. And, and I, I, do the, the, I practice this weekly. And this is, um, we're going to do a shortened version of what I do. And I, I, this is my sermon prep. This is how I prepare my sermons each week, is I have the text that we're going to be looking at that week, and I spend time um, going through all these steps. That's the first thing I do usually during the week, is I, I practice Selectio Divina, and I, I, I connect personally with the text, with how the Holy Spirit is moving, and then based on how he is speaking to me personally, the sermon just kind of naturally flows out of that. Um, and and, and I, I kind of do a longer version, so... To give you an idea, I do about 10 minutes of silence. Every step is about 10 to 15 minutes that I normally practice, which it takes about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, we'll be doing a shortened version, but I'll do, I'll do about 10 minutes of silence. I'll read the text twice, and you can add more readings. You can read the text twice during the reading, once more at the meditation. You might want to read it two or three times during the meditation part. Um, you might want to read it again at the incarnation or the contemplation part. You, you, I would say a minimum, read the text twice. And then any more than that, you're, you're not gonna, it's not going to hurt. Um, and then I'll spend 10 to 15 minutes in meditation, uh, 10 minutes probably in response, and another 10 to 15 minutes in contemplation. Um, we're going to be doing two minutes of silence. I think that'll be enough for us today as we warm up to this kind of practice. We'll read the text, have five minutes of meditation, five minutes of response, and five minutes of um, contemplation. Just as a warning, this, this can be intense. Um, if, I mean, if you've experienced these types of spiritual moments before, if you haven't, um, these moments where you really connect to God and you're spending intense time in prayer when he's speaking to you, when things are moving. It can, it can be wonderful, it can be exhilarating, but it can be, it can be a bit intense. <laughs> so um, my prayer is that we'll be open to what the Spirit has to say to you, each and every one of you. So I ho you ha hope you have your pens ready. You might want to write down your prayers whenever you get to the response stage or or make notes, but we're going to, to kick this off, and I'm going to light a candle as a visual reminder that the Spirit of God is here. He is not far. Christ is in our midst. And God speaks. He's not silent. And he doesn't only speak to certain people who have certain degrees or certain training. He, his desire is to speak to all of us. And he's big enough that he can meet each and every one of us in this moment in different ways, unique to us, if we are open and ready. So, during this time of this, this first moments of silence, um, I'll be our timekeeper. We're going to spend two minutes. I'm going to be doing this with you. Um, and I would advise that you have a short prayer ready, um, just one or a few words, because you will get distracted. <laughs> That's just a part of it. You're going to get distracted during these two minutes of silence. Um, and so have a short prayer ready. Just, sometimes I'll just say, Heavenly Father. That's it. Abba. I am here. Um, 
Sometimes I'll just say you. <laughs> you. Something to, to, as you get distracted, something to recenter you, to bring you back. And so during these two minutes, have, have that short prayer, that, those holy words to recenter you during this, these two minutes of silence. And we'll begin centering ourselves in his presence starting now. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, starting in verse 38, it says this. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. As we enter into the third stage of meditation, I'm going to read the text a second time. And during this time, the instructions are we're to hear what God, how God is speaking uniquely to your heart, wrestling with the images, words, feelings, thoughts, Ideas that God brings to mind. You're chewing 
on the words of the Scripture. What words or phrases shimmer or stand out? Do not choose this yourself. Let the Spirit bring it to you. You may want to write down your thoughts or circle certain words or phrases. And again, the scriptures are on the back of the bulletin. I'm going to read it one more time, and we'll spend five minutes meditating on this word together. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then, to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her.
You might have found that stage was not enough time. You might have found that stage that was too much time. Um, If you need more time with that, I would encourage you to spend more time there. We'll move to the next stage for our response. Based on how you've connected to the scripture, his word, how he has spoken to you, how he has brought your attention to certain things, it is time to speak back your heart to God. This is a deep and honest outpouring of deep speaking unto deep. You can pray silently. Um, you can pray by writing out your prayer. Um, combination of both. Um, and pray as you feel led. Um, there's no right way to respond. Um, you might want to thank God. You might want to ask for something. You might want to... Um, however you feel led. Be with him and speak back your heart to him now in these few minutes of prayer.
The next stage of the Lectio Divina is contemplation. Waiting in stillness before the Lord. Seeking to become pliable in God's hands. Holding oneself open to whatever God chooses to give, take, do, or change. Allowing God the potter to reshape, to remold, to perfect. We'll spend five minutes in silence now in his presence, without words, waiting for him. Let's begin.
the next stage is incarnation. It's not complete without how you live differently now. Whatever God has done or changed or given, it is time for us to live it out, however God has led you. Um, Daryl, you can start coming forward. We're going to conclude with one more song, um, but let me just say I'm proud of you. Uh, thank you for going on this prayerful journey with me this morning. Um, God was, he is, I won't say God was here, God is here. He was in this time. Um, I hope that you received, um, if not a word, at least his presence, knowing he is here, that he loves you. And that you are invited to come to him, be with him, live out his word for your life. May that be so with us.